Uh, first name is Ayana. I'm um, in North Carolina, and my business is called B. Uh, B is a just a platform, a group of people who are coming together um, mm -hmm. to silence the noise of what was and really put in more energy and passion to what can be. Um, mm -hmm. So we're becoming who we're supposed to be, des ultimately destined to be. Nice. Yeah. I like that. How long have you been running that for? Um, through COVID. Um, that okay. is what thrust me to be in the fitness space, the movement space. Um, I quit my full-time job. Um, oh, wow. And okay. I was like, I want to become the best version of myself. And sitting behind a desk or at, at that particular point, being at home 24 hours a day just wasn't bringing me joy. Um, so mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm going to become who I'm destined to be, not be afraid, take one step forward. Um, if I have to take a pause, that's okay. Um, yes. And it's definitely been, I've been on the quest for about, 365 days of supplying what I preach uh, to my community and what they preach to me. So it's, it's definitely a give and take. Yeah. I, was, I love that. That was so good. And what were you, were you in fitness before? Were you like an athlete growing up? So like, or do you just like start your whole fitness journey a year ago? Oh, you? no, no, no. So okay. <laughs> that would have been awesome, but um, <laughs> it's no, still going to be a good I, story. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Gotta have to start with somewhere. No, yeah. I was an athlete, a collegiate athlete. I ran track. Um, okay. I, cool. My whole, I grew up playing basketball. You know, we've, I think everyone probably grew up that way. You have to choose one sport, be passionate about it. Um, right. You can try all things, but choose one. And I, what led me through high school was basketball. And then mm -hmm. once I entered my sophomore year, um, I recognized that I absolutely loved running. And so I focused all of my energy into my track career, um, made it through collegiate uh, level competed for a year um, and then was gifted with a, with a wonderful and beautiful little girl, um, mm -hmm. which just, you know, just caused those passions. Didn't realize that there was a career in movement and celebration of that. Um, yes. So I found that later on down the line about three years ago um, was teaching online fitness and group fitness. And then it just brought me so much joy. So mm -hmm. I wanted to really focus in on that. Nice. And academically, what was your, where, where did you think that you were going in terms of your career? What would you have been doing? Yeah, uh, so I was really focused on pre-med, um, okay. really, really heavily on pre-med. I wanted to be an occupational therapist, pivoted, and ended up just going down the communication journalism path. Um, it seemed easier at the time, just seemed like it was like, okay, that's a little bit closer. I can kind of close the chapter a little bit clo <laughs> quicker. Sooner, yes. Um, so I went down that path. And then that took me to becoming a wedding planner for 10 years. Um, 10 years, okay. Yeah, I was just like, okay, love is in the air. Maybe not for me, but for other people, it's out there. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> so, you know, celebrating that, you know, just that level of celebration, it's, it's always been a part of me some way, some mm -hmm. shape or form. So whether I went down the, the pre-med route um, and or, you know, going down the wedding route and then now into the fitness route, there's some level and some form of celebration. I kind of always want to stay in that path. Yes, exactly. And that's why I ask those questions, because I know that for me, like I went to school hoping to be an architect and then realized that that wasn't going yeah. to do it. And then I went to environmental studies, singing urban planning, and that wasn't going to do it. And then I went yeah. to social work and I got my degree and in, in counseling and then I finally came to fitness so there's that thread of wanting to build and wanting to help people with their goals and their dreams that mm -hmm. that threaded through that to a place where now I'm in this fitness world and in this Pilates world and yeah. it's still about helping build people up and encourage them and help them to get to their their goals right whether they're mm -hmm. emotional goals or physical goals it's it there's, there's a connection so I always love to hear what brought them to this place right so mm -hmm. it's it's always fascinating and that really informs how you train how you speak how you encourage what goals you're you're, you're reaching after and then also who's attracted to you to some degree too right for sure for sure i think it's um I, and you may you may resonate with that you know we can some days we may show up and we're just kind of going through a routine and that's you know coming back to our why and like what brings us what brought us to this space in the first place like what you said like I want to help yeah. people, yes. um so whenever that, those days those sticky days come with they're inevitable, um finding that why and I think that that's what keeps me going day to sure. day so yeah yeah let's hang on that find that why thing um it's yeah. uh, we, we've all seen a Simon Sinek you know find your why and and the, there's all these different things that come with that. Mm -hmm. 
Is that becoming trendy now? Do you feel like that's getting kind of hokey or, or are um, people, you know what I'm saying? Like it is, it, it is, but it's not, I think. Okay, okay. So when I, when I'm ever asked that question, like, you know, what's your why? It's like, what do you mean? Why? Like, because I, I'm up every day. I was given the, the next day, but I think that if we think about it in a different way, I think there's three different levels to the why it's that surface yes. level. Like I mm -hmm. want to help people. Well, what, and then, you know, I would ask, what do you want to help them do? Yes. And then it's like, why do you, why do you feel that you are the person for that? Mm -hmm. So I've, I always like, whenever someone asks me that, it's like those three levels. Like, what are you really asking here? Yes. Um, it's like, it's a very open-ended question. It is. It is. And I, that reminds me of my days and working. And says the same thing. It's important though. It, it is totally really important. Is. <laughs> and I think that that's why I'm spending time because I, I don't want to make light of it and I don't want to just throw it out. Well, we'll find your why. Okay. Thank you. I'll just, I'll go and do that. Like, what does that mean? How do we live that out? Right? So mm -hmm. I remember when I was working in like big box gyms and they had us doing like those, those fitness consultations in hopes of yes. selling someone a big package of personal training sessions one of the sales strategies that was given that I still use is simply to ask five whys. Interesting. And, right. Cause it's like, it's like the, the, the layers of an onion. Okay. Well, and I've had people do it to me. So like they say like, well, why do you want to get in shape? Oh, because I want to, uh, I want to be stronger. Well, why do you want to be stronger? Because da, da, da. well, why is that important? Because of this, this, and this, and then you, yep. you get down to, I used to be bullied when I was in high school. I was I was overweight when I was a child, or I never had confidence before, and that's come out so many times. So by the time you you peel back all those layers, you know maybe it's just a question of asking, and not just like find your why, but ask the right questions of yourself to get to that. That why. is a good way to say it. Yeah, I've never heard of that framework, asking five whys in the sales process, but that makes so much sense. Um, because like you said, it, it always stems from something, you know, there, mm -hmm. there's always a deeper rooted. And I think we're so we're just programmed to quickly answer something mm -hmm. similar. How are you doing? Yes. I'm fine. Well, why are you, you know, like, yeah, there, yeah. I think if we give people the space to think and process, um, exactly, Gail, it is a very thought provoking and deep question. It, you can take it deeper. And I think we have you to can. give ourselves that patience um, within ourselves to like, answer the question honestly but then the, mm -hmm. those who are asking that questions you know listening and being um attentive to like what someone is trying to share sure. with you um when i was uh i used to teach like i used to be a trainer for trainers at this gym so we go through the um we go through that process and we do like you know you do like a a, a role play so you're mm -hmm. sitting down and they're asking questions and I'm training these guys. And the one guy was asking me, and my brother's actually in the chat here too, uh, Ferber, you'll see, uh, he'll, he'll laugh at this. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, so this guy's doing his sales consultation on me and he asked me like, well, why do I want to get in shape? And I said, well, I want to be, I want to be bigger, stronger and faster. He said, well, why is that important? Well, I just like to always be in the best shape I can be. Well, why is that important? And it came down to when I ran my 40 time when I was in university, it wasn't the best time and therefore I didn't start on my football team. And that sense of rejection because my, <laughs> because my speed wasn't good enough, it said, Martin, you're not good enough. We're gonna go with this guy instead. So I'm forever chasing after my 40 time, even today in the way that I train, I'm training for football. I'm trained to be bigger, stronger, faster. I found Pilates because I wanna get that edge. Like, so there's a sense of being an athlete that when I start to peel back the layers, it comes down to that one moment when, uh, from an athletic perspective, I was rejected and I want to be accepted in that way in my own head, not for someone else, but like, I yeah. want to say, I can still get those numbers. I'm the fastest 45 year old out there on the football field, <laughs> flag football on a Sunday morning. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so there's something oh, there that even oh, though that's a, it's su it seems superficial, but that's, that really is my why yeah and it came wow. out in this guy's role play in the middle of the thing and i wasn't like <laughs> but like i, I would have broke I'd be like, oh, <laughs> but uh Man. yeah so it's interesting Martin, i do have a similar experience you know i i kind of brushed over the rug i'm like contradicting myself like give yourself some opportunities to share your truth but like i yeah i got the boot off varsity basketball oh did I was you? Playing basketball since i was five 
and I yeah. audition or uh, trying out for audition or um, for to be on the varsity team in high school, which yes. has made me pivot and was like, well, I'm not gonna be on JV. I feel like I'm better than that, so I'm just gonna go right. for track. And like you said, it was like I just try to take it. Like I don't have to rely on anyone. It's just it's just myself. It's just like my yes. ability. Um, and like when you're running, it's just it's so freeing, right? Because you can it is. you can witness the work that you've put in. But it's yes. up to you to stay in that focus and stay in that mindset. Um, but man, yeah, the rejection is hard. It's the hard it's, thing to swallow. <laughs> yeah, right, right. And and track also, I think, is the beauty of track is the fact that it is so objective. Yep. It's not like bodybuilding where I I could train all year long and you know count my macros and do all these things and go on a stage and someone's gonna be like, you know, his calves could be a little bit bigger. You go on the track, you train hard, you go back next week and you shave like a hundredth off your time. You have actually gotten faster and it is yep. proven that time does not lie. So I love the fact that there is instant qual quantitative feedback on your improvement. Mm -hmm. You know, it definitely is. Um, yeah, it brings me joy to even talk about it. I'm, I'm happy we have that connection. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, it, not really. It's more like I wasn't fast enough, and I want to talk about this. <laughs> but um, and that's that's fine too. I mean, like, but it's funny. And if I could just add more piece to it, if I'm gonna just like bare my soul here right now, um, I feel like that part that part is what I do in terms of my training, where I spend so much time on preparation, and I speak to my athletes about preparation, and my clients who are weekend warriors or you know, kids, mm -hmm. everything is preparation, 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 because I feel to some degree, I could have prepared more for my testing moments. When, when do you feel, do you feel like preparation is a start and finish? Do you feel like you're always like preparation is completed? That's a great at some question. Point, just... I'm going to put my book down to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> That's, um, that's, that's a great question. And it's a journey. It is definitely a journey. Um, in that um, I've said the other day, like, no one's gonna stop you from starting. But there's gonna be so many obstacles to finishing something. Yeah, right. So I can talk about all the things I'm gonna start a puzzle today. Who cares if I start a puzzle today? Did, did I finish it? Like, I'm gonna open this new business. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start my weight loss journey today. Yep. Did I finish it or am I oh, now? Okay. It's not even necessarily finishing or a journey piece. It's just that fact that I can commit to starting all day long. Am I going to go on this journey? And in this, in my, my tagline is start your Pilates journey today. I'm not talking about finishing. I'm not talking about getting to your, your, your fighting weight, your dress weight, your bikini body. Yep. Start your journey. So. Do you feel like, uh, I, it's it's like I don't know. It's like very thought provoking. But what does start look like? Is it just Good question? Is it is it a commitment? Is it showing up to class? Or is like, it a what mindset? Is, like? is it a mindset? Yeah. Is it an action? I mean, I can I can talk about starting, and but then the day that I finally put my running shoes on and walk to the mailbox, and then the next day I run to the mailbox, and then you know what I mean, like that sort of thing, like that couch to five mm -hmm. k type mindset. So I don't know. That's a good question. Is there an actual answer for that? Like, what's from your perspective? What does start look like? I don't think so. I think, like you said, it's it's um, you know the yogi and me. I'm like maybe it's the mind body soul connection. Once all those three are connected, but then again, it's like something has to lead the pack. You know, something someone something is going to be a little bit more reserved. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think starting is following a prompting so whether that whatever that prompting is yes and maybe it's not progress maybe it's reflecting <laughs> you know that's a that's a start um so, maybe it's forgiveness maybe it's something else so starting is the the start the responding to the prompting exactly okay yeah i can see that but then, <laughs> yeah. I but feel like I... it's a, a complex thing because it. What I've been journaling about, and which is which is interesting, is that um, battling this this word of restart because I don't feel like restart is a word. I feel like yeah. you're 
you're not really stopping anything to like what you're saying. It's just like yes. you show that you, sh you sh if you start at something, it has begun. Nothing right. has ended unless you die. You, know, you die. Yeah. Like there's still some progression. There's still life yeah. that's happening for you. So that's like the, that journey piece. It's just like you start today, your journey has begun mm -hmm. and it will forever begin once you make whatever step you follow the prompting things of that nature so yeah that, no, that know, resonates with me no it, it totally it totally does because i say it to my clients all the time when it comes to um let's say for example they have been really disciplined with their diet and then like mother's day came a birthday comes families all these different things and then they say they're they're completely off their diet and they're like i'm gonna restart on thursday i'm gonna restart on monday so well yeah. no like you're still in that journey. Like you're, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like you're, like you're, you're still on that path, even though there's a the pause. I mean, I'll give you pause, but I wouldn't say you stopped. Yeah. But it's yeah, a, it's, a, it's an interesting, it's an interesting path, and I think that um, it's a word that I've been really trying to like place because I think I use it a lot. I think I'm like, I'm a restart, like you said. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start over clean slate, and mm -hmm. there's just no such thing. So. Yeah. Just reading Phil's comment here. I said I'm going to lose this dad bod for a month and it wasn't until my friend said she was going to do an ab challenge so I started to do anything consistently. Right. So then okay, so that's that's great, but in terms of the context of our conversation, was the start when he said I'm going to lose the dad bod and then it took action, or did the start happen when he committed to the ab challenge? The mindset when he the external spark but then that's a whole conversation around motivation yeah i feel like something what what do you like that initiation like what we were just saying like did that prompting like you're starting to go down that path like thinking about what your dad bought is eventually going to look like that's yes. that start like your thought process began the journey Mm -hmm. I feel like that's where it begins. Yes. Even if it's a decline, like if he's sitting there and he's eating chips, thinking about the dad bod that he committed to on Monday, that's now going to be five pounds heavier. He still it started began. on Monday, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it started. Yeah. Yeah. Let's hope that's not the case, Phil. But like, it's... <laughs> you got this. <laughs> you got this. <laughs> so, okay. So that is one word we unpacked. I, we're, I was going to hit you with just bang these words out so one was start the other was stillness still Oof. that is not a word that applies to my life <laughs> not no. at all it's just i yes mm, mm. it's 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 full i mean you know yes. like you have that we have we balance we juggle full schedules and stillness yes. is something that i gravitated towards and I, I keep saying this because I feel like we took, we, I've taken advantage of it. But prior to COVID, mm -hmm. I grabbed a hold of every five to 10 minutes. Like just, it's not even a level of labeling meditation. It was just sitting still, doing absolutely yes. nothing, eliminating the noise and just being with myself. Yes. Now that I think we've been gifted with so much time, mm -hmm. I haven't, I feel like I had to pack out my schedule to make my, my life feel fuller. And that relevant. I'm eliminating time to be still. Um, and what stillness looks like for me is it's actually embracing one thing at a time, sensory wise. Yes. So okay. you sit outside. What do you hear? You don't have to list all 15 things. What's one thing that you hear? Yes. I hear a bridge chirp. I hear a baby crying. I hear a car drive by. That's stillness because you're slowing this busy, full life, mm -hmm. one thought, one experience at a time. What do you smell? What do you Micro feel? Yeah, yes. like embracing every moment. Um, and I, I feel like I need to give myself that time. And like I said, it was it was only five or ten minutes, and I just felt so refreshed um, and felt a little bit more like re like realigned, if you will. Yes. Absolutely. There's a sense of in intentionality to that. It's not just, you know, we talked about starting. It's not just stopping. It's actually being mindful in that moment, no matter how brief it is, mm -hmm. um, to be intentional with that moment, to listen, hear, feel like, you know, 
awaken one of your senses to to savor the moment. Yeah. I'm going to read a couple of these comments here. That was such, that was good stuff. Um, Carrie Wilson's comment was, Carly Wilson, sorry, sorry. I think that that the start could be the acknowledgement that there is a change you want to make, mind start, and then plan, then physical start. I am similar to mind, body, soul. They have a start. Yeah, exactly. That's that's a good way of looking at it. I think that tied it up nicely. Um, <laughs> this combo taking me to places I wasn't expecting this morning. Good. <laughs> Micro moments of stillness. Yes, exactly. I have said in the past, violently guard your private time. Uh, and, and what I mean by that is it doesn't necessarily need to be like every day at six o'clock, I'm going to just shut the world out. It could be some cadence, like every week, every two weeks, whatever it is, find some cadence where you can find a moment of stillness yeah. and find up and even if it's just like you need to be in the same place every time to do it whatever it is find out whatever cadence works for you and just make that your time and then fight for that time like say no to stuff that comes up in that time whatever it is so i love that the, yeah in line with that micro movements moments of stillness is like whatever works for you to find that stillness find that formula and then carve it out as a habit i think that's when we really find life is when we can have some sense of a habit with that mm -hmm. moment of stillness i agree i think it's um i think we make we put a lot of pressure on ourselves and that that's what i say stay stay away from like i'm going to meditate right now you know yes. because it's there's yeah. like this extreme thought provoke Anx like, I'm not anxiety producing right yeah it's like Am I doing this right? Of course you are. Just sit, just sit still, you know? And um, I love that part. Like, I need to, like, screenshot that micro. What did she say? What did Katie say? Micro sure moments. I yes. love that. Bang. <laughs> Got that. <laughs> the it's going to be a T-shirt. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's, so that's, that's good. And still, yeah, stillness is one of those things that I, like, I find that I need that and there's different ways to get it. And one of the guys was on a couple of weeks ago was talking about it and going to the forest and just getting outside in nature. And mm -hmm. um, that was a good awakening for me because I'm the type of person that would just put some headphones on and, you know, go for a walk or just get in my car and go for a drive. Like that's, there's certain things that are life giving for me. And that just made me think about different ways to access that stillness, mm -hmm. you know, um, and actually, even last week when I, I had like a COVID false positive, so I had to, I had to like basically quarantine for four days until I got my next test, and it turned out that I was actually negative. I didn't have it, but okay. those four, yeah, so that was good. I was happy about that. <laughs> I was inconvenienced by the fact that it was a, a positive in the first place, but then when it's done, I was grateful that it wasn't sick, and two that it was it was negative. But four days where I had a chance to just. I had no choice. I had nothing to do. Like went, walked in the forest every day, just, you know, did supplies at home. I, mm -hmm. I, I was forced into that stillness, like we we're saying at the beginning where I didn't plan those four days off, but I, ha I had no choice. And I had to be, I chose to be still in that time when I was forced to stop. And that I think is the difference, like, you know? Yeah. I read something I heard something on a, on a podcast. I believe it was um, Super Soul. And um, Oprah was basically just kind of closing in the conversation, but she said, and it just stuck with me. She said, if your mind goes beyond like that particular second, like if you're already in the next day, week or month, that is when you know you need to stop. Yes. So ultimately, you know how like what your four days are, you, you went down this whole, you could have gone down this whole rabbit hole of like, oh my goodness. So if it is positive, you know, then I'm going to be shut down for 14 days and what happens. And like, it's just, we can always go beyond that one split moment that we yes. miss the opportunities of just living in that space. And like that, when I heard that, I was like, I do that all the time. All the time. And then it's like, that is a sure sign that I need to slow some things down mm -hmm. and I need to be appreciative of all the things that are happening around me and not live in a space that, has not happened yet. Right, right. And we're not talking about vision and planning. We're talking about worry. Exactly. <laughs> like, that's At two that different point, things. Yes. Like, you got you to gotta stop. Pull yourself yes. back in. Yeah. Y yes, exactly. Be, uh, we talked about start uh, rest. 
Um, one of the phrases that I, I've used a lot is your work is only as good as your rest. Love that. Yeah. And um, for, for myself and for, I'm sure for some of the people watching us, that grind don't stop, you know, uh, you know sleepers for suckers, take no days <laughs> off, like hashtag, hashtag, hashtag type thing. That applies yeah. to me. Like I can drive and drive and drive and I've had to program rest. I've had to put that in, like even physically in my schedule at certain times, if I realize I'm getting too driven with it, that, um, you know, that we can, that, that rest is a strategy that rest is like, you know, back to track, right? Like if you yeah. don't have a rest, you're not going to come back with a better time. If you try running 400s every single day of the week. Right. Right. So, um, I'm going to read uh, Joel's comment while you're, while you're thinking that. Yeah. Um, yes. It's so important. Worry can paralyze someone. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. 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 Yeah. Rest days are the best reward for working hard. True. <laughs> um, this is, this is one of those things, Martin, I'm just not really great at. I, I like you said, hmm. I think with trainers and I, I've kind of like taken a step back and um, really, I don't know if you've, even when you started your career in the fitness journey, the question of beyond why, but like, what, who are you as an instructor? was a major question. I feel like I started one way where I'm like, I'm that crazy, hardcore instructor when yes. I want to be a safe instructor. I want to mm -hmm. teach you how to move your body. That's all that I'm, I'm aiming for you to do. Yes. Um, and I think that once I reshaped like how, who I am, that is when I was able to give myself permission to disconnect. I mm -hmm. mean, and not be be available when I'm supposed to be available and then reserve the energy when I'm supposed to be reserved. Um, and I, I think it's, it's learning how to be selfless or selfish mm -hmm. um, in a sense so that you're protecting your talent, you're protecting your, um, your time with your clients. So we're, we're yes. kind of bringing this back to like more of the fitness space um, in general, mm -hmm. but that can be on a broader spectrum. You can protect yes. your time with your family. Um, you can disconnect and give yourself that time to disconnect because we all wear a lot of hats. We're all balancing a full schedule. Um, right. And just like being okay with that and just saying like, who, who am I as Blake? Who, who yes. am I as a mother? Great or questions, a father? yes. And, yeah. um, and whatever those answers are, being sure that you show up every single time in that space that way. And I, I think that is when those rest pockets like carefully fall into place. I agree. I agree. That sounds like part of the message that you have for like your people in general, right? Like just making sure that they can stay locked in on that and they can figure out what that means for them. Cause that's such a abstract concept until you boil it down to what it means for you. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's really good. The other part to that is what, you know, we're saying in, in our messaging earlier is about like, you know, what your message is for people around um, being unable versus yeah. being, un, un, you know, was it uncomfortable versus unable? Yeah, defining like what, if, if I'm uncomfortable or if mm -hmm. I'm unable. Sure, yeah, so yeah, say, say some more about that. I'm, re I'm really intrigued by like, how that plays out for how you. that stem yeah so in the in this this walk you know it's it's mental health awareness uh month and you know i've i've been very vibrant and loud about this is something that i've struggled with and i feel like a lot of us may have gone through similar spaces just in their walks of life but is it am i unable to continue to move forward or am am i or am i feeling uncomfortable are, are these moments too heavy for me to sit down and apply all the words we just discussed, finding stillness, finding rest, and then coming up with a conclusion to move forward? Is that where I'm at? Or am I unable to do that to where I'm, I'm weak? I need help. I need yes. to, to be carried. I need to be lifted. Um, and I think that those two words are, have, been, have been redefined in the flip-flop way. Okay. Um, where it's like, oh, I'm uncomfortable, so I can't do this. No, uncomfortability is just, it's expanding your capacity. That's really all that's happening. Yes. And it's not going to look easy. It's not going to look pretty majority of the time. 
Um, but giving yourself permission to say, I'm unable to do this, going back to rest, finding that rest, mm -hmm. or finding the space where like, my schedule is packed, I'm carefully and confidently saying no, um, so that I can protect yes. my space and protect exactly. my mind. So it, it's, it's all it's a full circle um, path. And it's something that I think it's, it's a journey, it's a new journey for me to just redefine those two words. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm learning how to do it and safely do it and confidently do it. Um, but the, do those words make sense? Are you like they the do. uncomfortability and just being unable? Yeah. So now, because what, what that made me think about was the notion of being unable. Um, I wrote down the word capacity uh, and you, you said there too, right? Because capacity is, it may mean that you say, I need help. I and and humbling yourself to say like I thought I could do this on my own, but the reality is that it's out of my scope, or I just okay. I don't have the bandwidth to do this right now, or I just actually I'm just weak. I'm just I just don't have anything left. Yep. Um, so that that piece, the 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 capacity piece, the we're strong people, and we want to keep that strong front. And many times there is such strength in saying, I need help, but we don't want to show that vulnerable side. Right. And so, um, yeah, so that just speaks vulnerability to me and just, and finding the strength in being vulnerable as opposed to the weakness in being vulnerable. Yes, exactly. Brene Brown would probably clap for you in just saying that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Standing ovation with that. But yeah, it's, it really, it really does boil down to that, but when we're able to apply these like two words in all shapes of life, like all areas of our life, I think that's mm -hmm. when life just kind of works and kind of clicks. Um, yes. and everything spills in place and there's, there's some calmness to um, what we want to achieve, what we want to uphold. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The, um, and, and the vulnerable piece the, I read a book on leadership a long time ago and I took away this one concept uh, the notion of being a wounded healer. Mm. And because especially in this fitness industry, our clients look at us like we're strong. We have great abs. We never get sick. We're never late. You know what I'm saying? Like there's a <laughs> sense of invincibility and they put us on this, this pedestal, even when we're trying to be as real as possible. And there's a sweet spot that this leader, this book was talking about, about being a wounded healer where I can share my scars. I could share those things that made me limp over the years, emotionally, so to speak, and still be able to help somebody else. I don't have to have this front of being perfect and flawless and scar free to be able to help someone else in their journey. And I like that because I think I was in a place where it was like, you know, not toxic masculinity, like never let them see you cry type thing, but still the sense of like always having a strong front. I need to be strong to encourage people. It's like, well, I can be vulnerable and encourage people too. I can let them see my down points and see how I got through that down point. Yeah. And you know what I mean? And that's when I started to share more about like going through my divorce, for example. Um, and that was, that was a tough blow for me on, on many levels. Um, and but putting that out there was something I did not just to, you know, to get pity and pe like, what was me? Um, but to say, like, you know, like, we all have ups and downs, we all have some kind of checkpoint in our lives. So it could be, you know, loss of a loved one, it could be an illness in your family, it could be, um, you know, a marital breakup, like it was in my case, everyone has checkpoints. So how did Martin get through his checkpoint? Let's leave it out there. And even though he has this little asterisk of being divorced. He's actually he's still okay. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I love that. So. I, it's um, simply put, we're all we're all each other's heroes. Like we're all each other's instructor. Yes. Um, and like you say, it's the pressure that comes from being in this field that we're in. It's um, it's lovely because we're able to kind of break down those walls of that I'm, I'm on this hierarchy. All, all that we're doing is just guiding you through movement safely and it helping you achieve your goals based off the reasoning of why we're here today, you know? And, um, but I, I love that because it's like worry, what was the, what was the quote? Worry or uh, wounded? a wounded healer, a wounded healer. It's beautiful. 
because if yeah. you haven't gone through anything, you can't you can't empathize or sympathize with someone who is. You have to be able to experience it in order to speak and it, it, let your words be more penetrating than, yes. than just assumption. Does that make sense? So like, yeah. I I absolutely 100% love that quote. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's just a lot more instructors have to be, and again, we're going to talk about our space here, but a lot of sure. more instructors, it's not, it's not a lack of vulnerability. It's just a lack. It's just more of um, eliminating the fact that we're on stage. We just have a, we have a mic on so that you can hear mm -hmm. us loudly, like simplifying all of the bells and whistles and just yes. saying, I'm literally just, I'm here. Like I'm talking to you. Yes. Um, I find those moments in my classes, especially with cycling, when the lights are off and music is, is bumping and we're sweating and it's at that moment where it's like, I can't do this. I say, friends, I'm tired. I need you. Like it's it's mm -hmm. it's okay mm -hmm. to to be not okay. It's okay to be unable. Yes. Um yes. it's okay to feel uncomfortable. Um and I think once we start normalizing that and we're not we're not being placed on a such a high pedestal we're all here we're all here yes. we all have a plethora of knowledge and we're all the class makes the experience the yes. lights make the experience the, right. the instructor and the in the connection makes the experience so we're all in that winning seat and i think if we if we speak to that we celebrate that um that's when everything starts to connect absolutely that place. yeah yeah you use the word plethora really well in that statement too this Record. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, so I love that phrase. Never heard it before. Makes you empathize with class. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, um, yeah, it, it, it resonated with me in such a, a way that it gave me permission. You know, I like I could be a wounded healer, like you know, as opposed yeah, to like, awesome. <laughs> like, you know, as opposed to like I have to be perfect. And mm -hmm. like, we, none of us, like, I think we're mature enough to know we don't have to be perfect. Yeah. Um, and social media is teaching us now that authenticity is king over polished. Um, but still, when we have to apply in our lives, it's scary. You know, it really is scary because we are we think, OK, well, how is how are people going to perceive me? Am I still going to be an authority in this space if people know that I struggled in this space? Yeah. I was I have you, have you ever shared anything in class that like similar to like what you're saying have you ever shared anything in class where you're just like i don't know if this is when it lands what i'm waiting for their response was there anything big that you've shared where you're just like i'm just gonna get this out it just naturally flowed through you and it was just like oh my god i can't believe i just said that over the mic <laughs> <laughs> I, I you know it's funny i i can't think of an example right now but i i that that feeling came over me when you said it yeah, where where I, I know I've done it. And it, it was that sense of like, well, that's out there. Let's see. Let's, let's keep moving. <laughs> let's keep moving. Let's see. Yeah. You know, what I mean? like, so I, I can't think of an exact example. But like, as soon as you said, I was like, yes, I have like, totally. I, I remember that feeling of like that, you know, something like right there, like, okay, I'm just throwing that out there. And let's see how it lands. And hopefully, you know, I, I I like to say that I'm playing for an audience of one. So if there's 50 people in the room, it's my hopes that whatever I'm saying resonates with like even one person um, speaking. Did, actually, did that's to freedom there. Did yeah, you it does. After that. I did. I did. And I felt like that was it. And, I, I, and now I'm remembering it's like in some of my most recent speaking engagements, I've done that where I've kind of gone off script and shared something. And after felt like, okay, I wasn't sure if I should have put that in or not. And then that's the very thing that someone pulls me aside after and says, you know, thanks for mentioning that. I really appreciate that you were that Special. open with, you know what I mean? I've struggled with that too, or I've been there as well, or, you know, that sort of thing. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah those are the moments. I like it. I think mm -hmm. if we if we give ourselves permission to, like, even in random conversations, you know, just casual conversations day to day, we share something that's off script. We'll use that word. Yes. Uh, we, I think we, we will live more freer. I feel like anytime I find an opportunity to just say something <laughs> randomly, even we, even on social media, people ask me all the time, like, how do you just have the confidence to just say all this stuff on social yes. media? Yeah. Because I do. It's, it's my, it's my truth. So there's no need for me to hide behind 
the computer screen. I want to connect with a lot more people than just, yes. you know, a nice filtered picture. Mm -hmm. I want you to like hear my words, hear my heart. Um, and it's, it's a way for me to free myself from it because if I hold it in, only thing I'm going to do is feel limited. Um, yes. And I, I think when we're able to speak freely, we were, like you said, we're connecting with those, those who are just like, wow, I didn't realize I could connect mm -hmm. to them on a deeper level. Yes. Um, and, and your respect in that capacity begins to flourish and grow. So I love that. Yes. DJ. Yes. Well, I believe you're pulled to share and be vulnerable because there is someone in your presence who needs to hear. Yes. yes. I love so that. True. Yeah. Yeah. And I love in one of your posts here saying we are all healing. We are all, yeah, we are all healing. Like, and it's almost like we're saying about starting and restarting and stopping all these different things. Like we are all on this continuum of healing and you know like going back to my divorce for a second that happened x amount of years ago the fact that i'm at a place where i'm good and free and able to speak about that i'm still healing in certain ways and there's certain things that still become a trigger um but where i'm at in this continuum is helpful for a person that may be over here in this continuum yes right so and that's why yeah. i don't just like dismiss it I bring it back up because there may be someone who's way over here who just needs to hear it's going to be okay. I've, you know, I felt like that as well, or whatever the case is, whatever our healing is, we are all healing and we're all at some place in that continuum of healing as well. So I love that. I love when you said that. Yeah. Healing has definitely come from, um, I guess a place of, I, I was blinded. I didn't realize I needed healing. Have you ever felt like you like Good thought point. you were over a situation and then you realize that you're not, you know, mm -hmm. and just like, wow, like there, I'm still not done with that. Yes. Um, that came in my, uh, and I, I've always recognized it while I'm on the mat with, with yoga and I'm just, I'm just in awe that there is more. And so, like you said, mm -hmm. like really, really making that connection that healing continues and it's, just like a scab or just like a wound, we might, we we're still carrying those experience with us for not only us and similar to DJ, because we don't know what that's, who that scar is for and all the scars yes. that we're wearing, um, your experiences, that experience mm -hmm. is, wasn't for you. It was for someone that you're going to meet down the road. Right. Um, and it's, it's very interesting, like that we could also be blinded by not knowing what we're supposed to be healing from mm -hmm. and to be sure to make, and do the work to make that connection. Right. So when that resurfaced for you in a different way, was that a different, what was different about that context that triggered something in that space when you thought you were, you thought you were okay? Yeah. Um, it was, it was a level of forgiveness. I think that's a, a big word for uh, all of yes. us to wrap our head around. Did I forgive? Yes. Did I not forgive? Um, was mm -hmm. it a traumatic experience? I think that's also something that we should probably consider when things are just traumatically happening to us. Did we just brush it under the rug? Did we suppress it? Mm -hmm. Did we actually forgive? What does forgiveness even look like? Um, and it was simply put, if you were to see this person, what would you do? And the only thing I could do was cry. There was something mm -hmm. else that was deeper. What, what, yes. what closure, or is it closure? No, what answers do you need? What mm -hmm. questions do you need you know, to ask? Um, and so that was for me where I was like, I need to heal from this. The first step is recognizing that. And I, you know, and I think we can, we can often go down the line yes. once we find that space of stillness, there are some things that we may have suppressed over the years. We didn't mm -hmm. realize that were happening um, or that we were, we were almost going through like a cycle with. And um, yeah. And I had to just really put in the work to yes. begin that healing process and not suppress it any longer. Absolutely. Uh, there's a the comment there from, from DJ where she says, going through and healing in order to be a guiding light for someone who else who's, who, someone else who's going through, who needs you. Um, I, I agree with that. And there is a sense of, there's a nuance to that that I also have to be cautious of is that we don't go through it for the benefit of others hearing the story, we go through it for our own healing. Yeah. Full, full stop. And then from that place, our story is crafted. That becomes an encouragement to others. And I understand that she, she obviously means that as well. Like uh, you can't capture everything in 
a couple characters on a on a <laughs> comment section but like but that's i think that that's key because i mean i know that like i we are so wired to think especially in this like in the fitness space we encourage people we build them up so we go through stuff so we could share a story of victory on the other end it's like well no no, no. like go through your process like lean feel into yeah. feel it out lean into it like really wrestle with it um my aunt used to say you just have to live through it you know like it's not like just go through it like live through it don't just like it, yeah yeah don't just you know scratch the surface of it like live in it sit in that anger how does that anger really feel okay you're done being angry mm -hmm. now let's move on instead of saying oh yeah that's probably i'm probably gonna be mad about that <laughs> like yeah and, that that's you know? a good one I, I think we're just like okay let's just keep going that's just keep yeah. moving forward and forward is also um like what your aunt's saying like recognizing where you are too um and and, and just feel, feelings are, are very complex for some i think and i i think that that's what what i know i know that i'm moving forward because with that that particular situation when i reached a level of forgiveness i was able to start the healing process Martin, I feel lighter immediately when I was like, oh, this makes so much sense. Yes. I began to feel lighter and feel like I can talk about this. Maybe emotions may come up once in a while or, sure. or not, but it's Absolutely. it's like I'm free from that. I'm no longer stuck. Mm -hmm. I, I was able to live through it um, and not suppress it and not say like it is what it is. Cause that's a classic hashtag, right? Um, right. Yes. <laughs> it is what it no is. Doubt. It already happened. Um, and um yeah, just giving ourselves that permission. Yeah, that's uh, I love that. Yeah, live, it. live through it. Live through it. The um, and we're we're talking. It's funny. We're we're kind of bouncing between the fitness space and just our own personal head personal, space. Yeah. <laughs> and and which is totally fine. And I love that because our fitness space really does represent what's happening in our everyday lives. This is the expression mm -hmm. of it. Like what happens, you know, in this Pilates room is, is how we're going to handle the things that come out in our lives. Like, are we afraid? Are we strong enough? Are we weak enough? How do we feel today? Not how do we feel generally speaking? How do we feel today? Which body yeah. has showed up today? Right. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's, that's all good stuff. I, I, I love the fact that we didn't even talk about yoga and how you found yoga or me and Pilates. Like, <laughs> like that's <laughs> yeah it's, we'll get that the next time um <laughs> but that's because like because this is life right like these these are the things that inform the rest of our lives and how we do everything else mm -hmm. and um it's scary to put that work in but it it needs to be done and you know circling back to what you said at the beginning we can we can take the time and put the work in now or we can get slapped with something that forces us to stop and and put the work in <laughs> right yeah so, Forced, forced to be stopped. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Such a great combo and needed to hear that today. Thank you. I'm so glad. You oh, I love that. were amazing. Anna. Um, did I miss anything? I had like a few talking points just because I like, I loved, like, I, I think I watched one of your lives. I just stumbled across one of your lives and you were talking about a lot of these things. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I just, I gave you just a moment to just expand on them and just really share your heart on those so you know so that this audience as well as your audience who, who's been here can just really get a sense of the woman behind the brand oh i love that martin thank you for that yeah, yeah it's um it, just getting back to b right and where that was birthed um there are a few people who are part of that that community um is but it was birthed during covid um, i think it was something i've always lived lived by Mm -hmm. um, but it was just like trying to make this into a community so that I have the support um, that I need it. Because so once I reach that, un I'm unable. I need those people to lift me up. Um, mm -hmm. And so, B, what does it look like? It's believing. Believing that you can. Yes. It's breathing. It's breathing to the spaces that feel uncertain, that feel uncomfortable. And then becoming the people that we are destined to be. Becoming... Yes. Um, the people were destined to be beyond those situations. And I feel like I've been living those three things out. And I just felt like we needed a little bit of hope and a little bit of just, you know, of, of a push um, because things were a little unsteady literally a year ago. Um, and so, yes, it's beyond the t-shirts, it's beyond the stickers, um, but it's, it's just a livelihood. It's a mentality. Yes. And, um, whether you're officially or unofficially, welcome to the community. Everybody on the show, everybody here is a part <laughs> yeah. of the community. But just applying those three words, anything and everything that you do, 
believing that you can, believing in your creator, believing in the things that you know you have the ability to do, bringing it back in circle, um, breathing, taking a breath, going back mm-hmm. to that yoga space and just finding that stillness and finding that like grounded space so that when you're becoming who you're supposed to be, your steps are making sense and they are in order the way that they should be. Yes. Amen to that. Woo. Nice. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me, Anna. That was so good. I'm gonna, you know, I'll send you the replay of this conversation. This will be a awesome. podcast at some point, and you know, recycle it, use it with your, your people. Um, do you have like a website or something you could put in the comment section? Actually, I sure do. Let me put that yeah, in there. Yeah, put it in there, and then when I repost this and save it to IG, put it down there as well in the comment section, and then we can, uh, we can continue to cheer you on. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me, Martin, and the rest of the crew here. There we go. Yeah. Love it. All right. Thank you to all these amazing people and comments. Please follow. I am DJ Anna. Is that right? Uh, DJ, yeah. She's yeah. Uh, awesome. <laughs> JC Vitality is amazing as well. Just so many quality oh, I peeps. I love that. Jamie. Yes. Helen Hayes is amazing fun friends awesome all right signing off thank you again really really appreciate the chat all right see you soon all right take care bye everybody bye